Hi there, it's Kimberly Wilson of Tranquility Du Jour and a huge, huge welcome for our Facebook Live. What I wanted to do is just a little show and tell about the brand new day books and playbooks that just came in. So exciting. And we've been packing them up all day long in these beautiful pink envelopes and they're headed your way. So I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who supported it because your support um, helps a veteran printer in Ohio. It also helps support small business. It also helps support a graphic designer, a single mom. And then um, it's just, oh, oh, and we plant a tree for everyone that we sell. So I just wanna say a big thank you because this is like freaking year six, I think, of doing this. So a big thank you to your support. And one thing that's really fun is that we added this new piece this year, which is the playbook. So just to kind of give you an idea, so here's the thickness level. So this is 100 pages, this is 200. And again, the reason that the day book is so much bigger is because it has your weekly layout. And this year we did five weeks for every month. So those of you who like to just set all the weeks within a month, you're gold with this. So there's actually, what is that? That is 12 plus 52. So it's a lot of weeks, right? It's 64 weeks that's actually in your planner this year. And uh, another piece about that is that we added these really great little weeks intention. So you can really spend a little bit more time of getting focused on an intention and then also gratitude. Okay, so this is in the day book. So what I wanted to do was show a few of the new pieces from the day book. First of all, of course, a new cover every year. And then the table of contents. So this just gives you an idea of what's on there. And of course, this is all on the website, but sometimes it's nice to see the physical thing held. And then one new page, of course, is Savvy Sources, updated the Savvy Sources, which with additional podcasts that align with the topic and left room for you to put in some of the books that you would like to read. And I know some of you probably need like four times this amount of space, so you can add to that. So there's a lot of additional blank inspiration pages in the notebook. So another thing that I added that I'm really excited about is for the year's dreams. You know, sometimes we, well, we have the blank space, right, to do our year's dreams. This is something we do every year. And I love doing this because I sit down at the beginning of the year or the end of the previous year and think about what I wanna bring forth. And so in addition, what I added this year is your year's dreams, 25 things to experience this year. So I think something like, I don't know, skydiving or salsa lessons. And then year's dreams, 10 places that you'd like to visit this year. So that's kind of a fun idea too. And you know, it doesn't have to be like far off land. It could actually be, hmm, I just wanna to go to the local library. You know, I was just up in New York City recently and went to the New York City Public Library. Oh my gosh, that was an amazing artist state. Highly recommend it. Oh, and I just have to show this photo because I'm very proud of it. This is uh, Monet's garden, actually, Givernay, France. I love this. And then this piece is always fun that I do on retreats, and it's creating a start and a stop list. So what is it that you want to start doing more of in your life in the new year? What do you want to stop? So for me, one thing with stop is I was eating my uh, Amy spicy chili in the kitchen, standing up earlier before this call, and I thought, I want to start sitting down in the new year, actually sooner than that, to actually eat my meal and not be standing. One other piece I wanted to share, so I always do recipes, right? So it's traditionally been kale chips, green smoothies. Last year I added avocado toast, yum, and chia seed pudding. This year, I actually added protein balls. If you haven't had these protein balls, they are amazing. Now there's tons of recipes out there, so lots and lots of options. But this was kind of my favorite and go-to, so you'll find that on your recipe page. Another new thing that I added, which I'm really excited about, because I, I actually succeeded at doing a detox this year, um, last month, I was so proud of myself, so I did a seven-day detox, and I basically, I based this, detox idea on it. Hi, Miss Bellstar. Um, and so basically it's like, okay, what do I want to include? So all the yummy things you can include. Hi, sweet girl. I think Belle wants to come say hello. <laughs> um, and so also things that we don't include, right? So 
like meat, dairy, gluten, I mean, all sorts of things. So it's just this interesting way if you have been wanting to do a detox or they're also called cleanses, this might be a fun way to get you started. So that is just a little sneak peek inside this year's day book. So you'll notice it still has the, the sturdy covers, which are nice too. And then of course you can open it completely. Day book, voila. The brand new piece, of course, is the playbook. And you know, I came up with this idea this year because I was thinking that there's so many people who actually use digital calendars these days. I know, craziness. Every time people send me a meeting invite and I'm supposed to click on it and it's supposed to go into my Google Calendar, I'm just like, um, I'm kind of analog with this, so I'm not gonna be accepting your invitation, but just know that I'll be there. So if you are one of those, then the day book is for you because of course it has the weekly spreads for every single week. But if you're a digital girl, or you have another planner system that you love, you've been using for years and you just can't bear to part from, the playbook's for you. So it has all the pieces that I just showed you in the day book. Again, so table of contents, just to kind of give you a peek. There's so much in here, right? So there's the 32 tranquility tools. These are ideas to bring forth in your day, your week, your season, your month. And then also the savvy sources that I showed you, the year's dreams, all sorts of things. Also there's Trinkle Travel. So those of you who will be traveling, there's a travel checklist. And then there is also a, a some ideas. I'm gonna pull this up, page 35. Um, some ideas on ways to kind of pack in a way that is light and easy. All right, so one thing that's a great piece at the beginning is to roll your clothing. So if you've never done that, you may find so much more space. And I know many of you will be traveling this week for Thanksgiving and then very soon for the holidays. And so it's just nice to think about, okay, what are my go-tos to carry with me? Now the last piece I want to show, oh, and isn't this beautiful? This is the Cloisters in New York. So July I was up in New York and I had, I just started hearing about the cloisters. I'd never heard about it before. So my girlfriend and I, we went, it's actually like, I don't know, 50 blocks north of Harlem. It's super, super far up and it's stunning. So if you ever get a chance, check it out, the cloisters. So the other piece I wanted to show you with the playbook is the layout. Okay, so you don't have the weeks, right? Because the idea is that the weeks you're doing on your own in your own planner or your Google Calendar or whatever it is you use. So what you do have is you have your month at a glance and then you have your tick boxes there, your month's dreams and then your month's review. And that's at the end of the month you do a review. How did it go? How did it feel? What were you able to do and bring forth and experience? Then a daily checklist. So it has 31 days and then your weekly checklist. So each month has this four page spread. So that's the playbook in a nutshell. And it's great because it's light. What I find is as my year goes on, my day book, I tend to add lots and lots of pages and ephemera and what have you. And so it can get a little heavy. And so those of you who tote them everywhere, you may prefer the playbook. All right, and so just a heads up too, before I move into some holiday tips for tranquility, is we have less than 40 left. I think we have about 22 of these and maybe about 35 of the day book. So if you'd like first, go ahead and grab one and uh, our, the little elves here, me and Tim, will get them out to you. And Belle, she's not really super helpful, but she's very cute. Um, so the last thing I wanted to do before I dash, I'm teaching mindfulness meditation tonight and then going to see Mean Girls, the musical, I'm so excited, is I wanted to share four tips for having a bit more tranquility in the holidays. So number one, I have a one hour video actually that I produced last year around this time that is on the Facebook page and if you go to videos you'll see it and again it's a one hour so there's all sorts of tips and ways in which to bring forth a bit more tranquility but today I also wanted to share a few more I just wanted to provide that as a resource so that's always available to you and please 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 check it out the next thing I wanted to 
Belle sitting on my mic, of course, and pulling it down because she loves cords. She gets always gets her tail caught in all of our cords. We're like, how does she do this? So toting creature comforts. All right, so I have five here. And this is something that I recommend for a lot of my clients too. Whenever you're going home for the holidays and it can be stressful or you're traveling, you're on the road, what have you, it's nice to have a few things that bring you a sense of comfort. So first off for me, candle. Like I, I always travel with a candle and matches. So candle, lavender oil. So lavender oil, this is great because it's a roll on. And so when I fly in particular, I'm an anxious flyer. I like to have my lavender and I always have this in my bag. Parfum. So this is the Tranquility, Tranquillite parfum that I created in Paris. So I always have this with me. It's rose, gardenia, musk, really yummy. And again, this is a creature comfort. I always like to have a little dab of parfum oil on tea so again i also travel with tea bags and this one's a really nice one and everyone who has ordered a day book or a playbook you're getting a bag of either this tea or paris breakfast which is a black tea with lavender so i love to travel with a few tea bags and crystallized lemon and so what that is is just these little tiny packets and it has a wedge of crystallized lemon no sugar or anything else add it to hot water and voila you've got a really detoxifying morning beverage or evening beverage and then the last thing from a creature comfort perspective is a scarf. So I tend to always have one of these in my bag this time of the year. So it's an infinity cowl, right? So you can wrap it around. You can also, I'll make it a lap blanket because it's quite wide, as you can see. And so that can be a nice little lap blanket too. So sometimes we're in situations where it's just a bit chillier than we would like. So I always like to have extra fabric. And this is made with organic cotton and organic bamboo fleece, part of the Tranquility line. And through November 30th, everything at tranquility.com is 30, or excuse me, 20% off through the 30th of the month. So feel free to check that out. Um, last two, one is simple style. So for example, since I'm off to teach mindfulness, I'm wearing the two-in-one fitted top and leggings, and then I have a ball skirt wrapped around it, not for teaching mindfulness, but for the play after. So think of simple style, of things that you can put on and then you can edit or alter to accommodate where it is you're going. So I even think like yoga practice, to Thanksgiving dinner you know can you just add a skirt or something to your basic outfit and then the last thing I'm currently studying positive psychology so I'm in a six-month certificate program certificate of applied positive psychology right so it's really interesting and one thing that we learned during our first weekend that I wanted to share because I think it's very applicable for this time of the year and honestly for life in general is to note three things that good things that happen to you because you may notice that we're really good at noticing what happens to us that isn't so good right 80 percent of our thoughts are negative so our minds tend to go there and our journal writing might be that way our therapy sessions etc and so very very normal incredibly normal However, if you would like to do a little bit of shifting of the mindset, the idea is to think about three things you're grateful for, and I know you all know the, the studies and the data out there on how important gratitude is, but the additional piece of this is to note how you contributed to these good things, right? So for example, a good thing that happened today is we got tons and tons of packing pulled together. Yay, Tim's like, yay, in the background. And what was really great about that is it's a fun process. I love putting um, all these handmade pieces into the package and then writing beautiful and a little heart above your name, right? So I'm really grateful that I have the support of so many of you, we recognize so many names, and that we get to ship you a goodie. And one way in which I contributed is being the little elf who does the packing, right? So thinking of three good things that happen to you every day and what you did to contribute to them. All right, so thank you guys so much for tuning in and I wish you a phenomenal Thanksgiving. Those of you who are stateside, those of you elsewhere, a beautiful jaunt into the holiday season. Thanks for being here with us. Namaste.